Welcome to Bean and Bracket Factory and welcome to my latest video about my RAG Austin 7 Special and its ongoing development. So in this episode or series of episodes I'm going to be talking about the brakes and the mods that I need to do to the brakes. Now the brakes worked okay but because of the previous project which was to modify the suspension and lower the whole car I now need to do some fairly fundamental changes to how the brake brakes work particularly the brake pedal arrangement so that's what the project's all about so what i'll do is i'll start off by taking you for a bit of a guided tour on the brakes and what it consists of and then we'll talk about what i'm going to do and then we'll get cracking so let's do it so the brakes themselves um, at each corner are actually hydraulic brakes they're not the cable brakes as originally fitted to um, Austin 7s. These are hydraulic and actually uh, the, the back plate is a custom item but it's very similar to a Morris Minor back plate and these wheel cylinders are actually Morris Minor wheel cylinders. So it's all hydraulic um, and that's all fine. That's not the bit that I'm actually changing. That all works fine. What I'm changing is the pedal assembly so I'll show you that. So now for a closer look at the braking or the brake pedal arrangement. So we've got the side off and we can see in there we've got a brake pedal and the brake pedal is actually pivoted on the clutch um, pedal shaft. So the clutch has been moved to the other side and this pedal which I made last year uh, pivots on the bottom like that and is connected via this link there through a bell crank not a bell crank a crank and it actuates backwards against the master cylinder which is hidden underneath there and you can see the top of it there now this actually all works but you can see what the snag is the snag is that now I've lowered the car the master cylinder is the lowest point on the car and is actually the bottom of the bracket is only about 20 mil off the deck um, it wasn't ideal before and now it's even less than ideal. Um, catching the bottom of the car is one thing but ripping your master cylinder off is quite another. So what I'm going to do is junk the entire arrangement and I'm going to replace it with master cylinder which sits around here somewhere. And rather than having a pedal which pivots from the bottom it's going to pivot from the top and it's going to the pedal is going to stick up here somewhere a bit a bit like this um, uh, throttle pedal is it's going to stick up out of here it's going to act backwards onto the master cylinder which is going to be on a bracket just there so as you can see just like all the other projects uh, I'm going to have to remove a load of stuff uh, do what I need to do put in the brake pedal and then relocate various other things so this um, this shaft which is the uh, throttle linkage is going to have to change I'm going to have to take all that off and this is the um, header tank for the rad it's a non-pressurized system so when it gets hot this fills up and then it siphons back so this has got to go and I'm probably going to fabricate something which sits in inside this space here haven't decided yet uh, but first things first, I've basically got to take everything to pieces. So I've now taken off all the parts and this is the old pedal um, which I made last year. This is the, the throttle pedal lever and this is the bracket that was mounted underneath the chassis and this is the lever that transposed the, the, um, the forward push of the pedal into a backward push of the master cylinder. But it's all kind of academic because this is what we're working on now. So the decks have been cleared uh, and I've basically marked out the centre line of the pedal where the, the pedal is going to be. So obviously I need to cut a slot. Now I've, I'm cutting it fairly close to this because um, I want the pedal to be as far that way as possible otherwise it's going to bash into the, the gearbox. Uh, so I'll cut that initial slot at about I think it's about five centimetres if it needs to get longer, then I can make it longer in other direction. I cut that slot, and once I've done that, I can I can start to mock up the whole thing with cardboard and string and glue and sellotape and stuff uh, before I start to actually cut metal. So I'm going to try and cut that out in situ um, using a drill and a jigsaw, but I'll need to take this out first because that's obviously in the way. 
But as soon as I've cut the slot, I need to put this back in, of course, because I have to work around this. I, can, I can't, you know, there's no point putting in a brake pedal if it then clashes with that. So let's get that out and drill the, uh, cut the slot. So the slot is now cut and have you ever seen a jigsaw used backwards? No, nor me neither. I only thought of that just then. Um, anyway, so the um, steering column is back in and now it's time to start playing around with some cardboard and a mock-up. And I'm just gonna basically just make something, anything very, very quick and dirty and just stick it in place and see what it looks like. So this is mock-up number one. So you've got a pedal there, uh, which is, uh, this bit is uh, eight inches long from the pivot, and that's two inches long from the pivot. So it gives you a four to one ratio, just completely made up. Uh, completely made up the dimensions of this. Um, and it's a useful exercise because straight away I can see that if I pivot this thing backwards and forwards, my slot is far too short. So. If I position it such that I get th th thrown that angle, I can't move it in that way. So uh, bottom line is that that slot needs to be at least probably half inch longer at either end. So that's quite a good start. Quite like the pedal length, the ratio seems about right. Um, it's an, The pivot is an inch above. Everything's imperial to the rounded nearest inch or inch and a half. So that's a, a, an inch above there, which gives me enough space for a nice big big boss. This uh, bit is all completely made up as well. So I can see that the angle of this rod here is sloping down a bit too much. It needs to be more horizontal. It's got some scope to move. Um, so I can lower this in the bracket to the tune of, well, a quarter of an inch or something. So it served a purpose. It's the first kind of cardboard mock-up so probably what I'll do now is make a bigger slot and probably try and finalize a position for this pivot point and then I can make a new one of these and I know the throw of this um, piston is about one and a quarter inches so I need to make sure I'm getting sort of that sort of much throw without it hitting the gearbox underneath so uh, yeah, make the slot bigger and make a new one of those. Right, the cardboard mock-up has been tweaked a bit. Now, I've made a new one of these. Now I've not I've got a nice horizontal um, rod into the master cylinder. And I've actually changed the ratio of this bit to that bit underneath there. And it's now more like um, 3 to 1, which is what I think I need based upon all the ratios in the previous system but the only slight snag is now is that it's almost impossible to press on the bottom of this because my foot is going to land higher up oh, my foot is going to be pressing around there not there I haven't got a tiny foot so you've got obviously got to juggle uh, with all of these parameters so uh, I think what I'm going to do now is raise this pivot point up a bit higher um, and again change the ratios of the of the lever arm but i think uh, the time has come to start making things out of metal i can't keep on making bits and bobs out of cardboard it's diminishing returns i'm just going to bite the bullet 
and make something and try it. Uh, I just need to make sure I don't invest too much time in making it all super shiny and bling and painted with holes in. I just need to make the bare minimum, minimum viable, to, to see if this thing works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some brackets with some pivot points higher up. I'm going to make an arm and I'm going to make a box to mount that and then I'll have the basic mechanism to see if I can make it work. So that's next. So now at the bench, uh, these are the, the prototypes and this is the, the pattern I've, I've settled on. And uh, I've cut this out of uh, six inch steel. It's a solid thing. It might end up being the final design, I'm not sure. I've not spent any time on it really, apart from cut out the shape. Take the sharp edges off, and drill a couple of holes. So that's, that's fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I've gotta make the brackets. So I made this little template and I've marked it up on this uh, three mil, is it three mil or is it four mil? Uh, it is uh, four mil steel. So these, this will make some quite chunky brackets. So I'm going to make these. I'm going to cut them out. Now it needs to have a fold just here. It's very, very difficult to to fold this steel. Um, so I'm going to do a sort of half cut, half weld type fold on that so this is what I'm doing next I'm going to make two of these a couple of brackets cut out of, of the sheet steel with the bandsaw I've still not put too much effort into these uh, although we put a bit of effort in because I'm hoping that these might actually be the final brackets so uh, I need to drill a few holes in them now so I've made these two brackets and I've drilled all the holes, I haven't bent them yet, but I've drilled all the holes first because it's obviously much easier to drill holes in flat plates. So these two are the mounting holes at quarter inch. These two holes are both three eighths of an inch and they are two different options for the pedal pivot point. And these two holes are half an inch and they are just adding lightness. So that's just drilling and filing and cutting. So um, the next bit, which is a bit more interesting, is that I'm going to bend it over. Now what I'm going to do I'm just going to clamp that onto the side of there and use an angle grinder to slice down there about this is four mil sort of three mil groove and then i'm going to bend it over now the advantage of doing this is that why i'm going to bend it over and then i'm going to weld a fillet in there so uh, the advantage of doing this is it's actually very very hard to bend the four mil i'll just smash it to bits or have to heat it till it's red hot and it's very difficult to get it exactly in the right place. But by doing this, I can get a pretty accurate fold uh, because it will only bend on a thin bit. And on the outside, it will should, if I do it properly, look quite nice and neat in a nice, nice tight corner. So let's have a crack at doing that. You can now see the, the slot that I cut into it. It's it's about two and a half mil down. So now I'm going to stick it in the vise, and I'm going to bend it over. And hopefully, it's going to bend over in a nice neat bend and not snap off, which is the, always the risk. So it's bent over at 90 degrees and you can see on the inside it's quite a neat fold. On this side you can see it's actually torn, uh, sort of ripped apart, but that doesn't actually matter. It's only done that because my angle grind was was um, deeper at, at the far end, so it kind of had to tear there. But that doesn't matter because that's all going to get filled with weld anyway, so I just need to make sure it's pretty much 90 degrees, well exactly 90 degrees. And I can run a weld along there and make a nice, a nice neat bracket.
So here are the brackets. Now, um, you probably saw that I had three passes of weld along here. The first pass was a very low current weld, about 100 amps, less than 100 amps, just to get some material in there. Uh, because I didn't want to go high current, because if I did, um, I would have blown through this crease. I wanted to have it a nice, neat fold just there. If I'd gone up too high, I would have blown through the back of that crease. So I did one run at a, about um, just under 100 amps. Then I went, wound it up to 115 and full pelt went along the top and along the bottom. So three passes. Same, same with this one here. Back from this one, you can see I've just just gone through it just there tiny weeny bit but by the time it's painted you won't see that cosmetic anyway so i think they're i'm quite pleased with those they are very much in the style of a rag in that they've got they're made out of chunky metal and they've got holes in them so uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to assemble um well, i'll do it now so uh stick a washer on there that's going to go through there like that and another washer will go on there like that. That will go on there like that. And I'm going to have a boss on here. It won't be quite that big. The overall width is going to be that, including this. I'm going to have this um, bush inside. And that's uh, another washer on there. That's going to go on there like that. Stick another washer on stick it on there like that and what's the way it's going to work is that the the, the brake lever arm is going to rotate the, the the bolt will stay still be tight and the arm will will spin on the bolt which won't move so um, I can now actually stick it in the car um, drill some holes bolt it in and uh, then I can mock up I'll redo the prototype for the cardboard uh, bus cylinder holder um, and start to fabricate that. So let's take it on the car. So here we now have the brackets um, sitting on the car and the pedal has been uh, installed. So if we move the pedal backwards and forwards, you can see uh, obviously that box won't slide up. It'll be attached. So it will push the piston in. So. Uh, now what I need to do is to make one of those out of metal obviously it needs to be lifted by about five millimeters so that that rod is horizontal at the top of the throw of the arm um, when I've made that I can bolt it in and start testing it uh, but that is not going to be in this episode I think that's all for now um, that will be in next week's thrilling episode along with making a pedal to go on the end of this stick and to work out how I'm going to route all of the brake lines etc. So that's all for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have then hit like. Uh, if you want to see the next episode hit subscribe and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.